Welcome to the show. I am your host, Brian Lee Watley. Our story begins tonight with our very special guest, American Idol finalist Jeremy Rosado from Season 11, Placing 13. Dubbed as Jer Bear from Jennifer Lopez, Jeremy Rosado is an American singer from Valrico, Florida. Rosado graduated from Durant High School in 2010. He auditioned for American Idol four times in a row previously to the 11th season. And in the semifinals, Rosado performed Gravity by Sarah Bareilles. And he was not one of the top five vote getters, but was one of the six contestants selected to perform in the wild card round. And in the wild card round, he performed I Know You Won't by Carrie Underwood, and was one of the three contestants selected to be a wild card and advance to the top 13. In the top 13, he performed Stevie Wonder's Ribbon in the Sky, and he was the lowest male vote getter and went against Elise Testone as the lowest female vote getter. The judges chose to save Testone, and Rosado was eliminated from the competition. He is the first male and fourth wildcard finalist to be eliminated first in the finals. But that doesn't matter, because Jeremy Rosado has an amazing voice. He's got a great spirit and full of life and energy. And you can tell that when we talk to him, and you can hear that when he sings. Our musical guest tonight is, of course, Jeremy Rosado, with his song, Ribbon in the Sky. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome, Jeremy. How are you today? I'm doing good. What's going on, everybody? Man, I, I'm telling you what, I'm super excited. I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, love the work that you do, uh, the, how you sound, your whole music thing that you got going on. Um, it's a pleasure for, for me to talk to you today, so I'm super excited. But in case somebody hasn't ever watched American Idol and don't know what that is or didn't watch the season you're on, can you give us just a few minutes um, about you and, and what you do? Okay, so my name is Jeremy, like you said. <laughs> Everybody listening out there, I was on another show called American Idol this past season, um, along with you, called Phyllis Villa. Yes, the other ones that, you know, everybody loves. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I've been dreaming about the show all my life. I, I've been watching it since I was 10 years old. It's been on since I was 20 now. And um, I was with my mom. I said, Mom, I'm going to be on the show. You watch. And I've been praying about it all my life. And, uh, I've been extra blessed this year to have the experience where I've got to experience my life. It's completely changed. And, you know, coming from, you know, just being a regular kid. Going to school and stuff and being able to live my dream is unbelievable. Like, you know, I can't even, I look back at a year ago, I was working in a doctor's office, it's actually the new doctor's office, nevertheless, and um, now I get to sing for a little bit, so I've been so, so blessed. That's cool, that's cool. Um, so being on the on the season, season 11, it's um that was pretty difficult because there were a lot of talented people on there and you um yeah, you did best, outstanding man. Thank you so much. I, I definitely think it's the best season uh, American Idol have had of uh, the amount of talent that was on. You know they've always had like two or three amazing singers and then everyone else was you know pretty good. This year you look at Colton, you look at Justin, you look at Philip, Joshua, Holly, Scott, everybody was so good this year. It was definitely hard, but, um, you know, Jennifer, she, my Jennifer, she definitely made it a little easier for me. Yeah. So are you still, um, before we get uh, into all, all the American Idol stuff, because all, all the fans and all the listeners are, they sent me a ton of questions to ask you, and producers and everybody's really excited. But um, are you still at the doctor's office? Are you still working? Because that infectious disease place you were working at was pretty darn cool, I have to admit. Are you still there? <laughs> I'm not there anymore, no. I, I, I know it's. You know, as soon as I got eliminated from the show, I said, well, I love them with all my heart, but I'm not going back. <laughs> and, I, you know, thank God I've been able to honestly just sing the living and not have, have not had to go back. I go back to visit them. That's it. Nice. Well, are you still in, um, my understanding is you were also in college, right? Are you are you still going to finish your degrees and, and um, when I, you, whenever you I, get time? I am definitely going to go back to school and finish up my, you know, my degrees and yeah well i can completely understand on how your schedule and everything is is going on um 
for this actually I was going to say for this year but I mean for the next upcoming years I mean your future is completely changed um, from where it was yeah. in the past what it is going to be now and I mean go ahead we're not even signed to label yet. And I'm, I, 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 I catch myself literally on my phone with business calls in different cities every week doing something else. So I can imagine what it's like, you know, when you hit the big time. Yeah. Well, you're, um, you started singing, from my understanding, you started singing pretty young. And then um, your, your influences, I, when I was doing my research on you, looking up, you had some really great influences, friends. I can't even pronounce the name. Francesca Bastielli and Kurt Franklin and Israel Hoffman. Oh yeah, Francesca Bastielli. That is, um, like it was Israel Hoffman and, and, and um, Kurt Franklin. The, the, I, I grew up in church, and um, we still have the church. Praise God. I'm actually a yeah, worship yeah. leader at my church. Nice. Um, like changing international ministry. Facebook.com slash LPIM. Come check us out. Um, and um, you know. I've been singing, I think, since I came out of the room, and my mama brought me to church, and I, and I loved every minute of it, and I thank God for you know, everything that he's done in my life. So Christian music has always been huge for me. So Francesca Battistelli in Israel and Kurt Day has been such inspiration in my life. I have to have a career that is able to stand for what I believe in and at the same time be crazy successful as they are. So. Nice, nice. Well, your genre for music is is pop. Do you think you will ever do any um, Christian recording records or anything like that? You know what? Honestly, I, I I actually just did. I don't know if you've ever heard of TBN. It's called the Trinity Broadcasting Network. I just did yeah, a show yeah. on it with Pastor Donnie McCorkman, and um, it was amazing. And, and I, you know, God has definitely opened some doors, and um, you know, I, I'm, I'm open to both sides here, and, and I. I've always wanted to do music that would want to uplift people, whether it be crossover music, whether it be just straight Christian music. I always wanted it to be something to get people to give them a hope and something to believe in. So, you know, Christian music, I would love to do. And it might be my past, you know, I'm just trusting God at the moment. And we'll see. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because your voice, man, I mean, um, it's pretty amazing. So I could I could definitely see you doing a, a Christian CD, a Christian album, stuff like that, and it just topping the charts and stuff like that. Because, yeah, I mean, you're an awesome singer. Um, so, on American Idol, your um, your performance because you made it. You know, I mean, thousands and thousands, and thousands of people. You know, obviously try out for this show, um, and you yeah. rock you rock the stage every time you got up there. Um, but you auditioned four times previously, correct? Four times prior to this one, yes. As long as we've auditioned. That's a, that's a message to everybody listening. If you have a dream, don't give up. Well, it's your time, it's your time. And, um, yeah, I was, you know, I, I just went this year. I set the audition for the show. I said, well, I don't think this is going to happen again. But, you know, I will give it a shot. And, um, you know, it worked. And I still can't believe that I made 12, 112, 21,000 people. Yeah. Not a number you see I know, I know, man. That is so awesome. And I tell you what, the fact that, and the reason why I wanted to mention the year audition four times before is because I love to get about the word for people to never give up. And you never gave yeah. up. And your tenacity uh -oh. to stick with it is, is amazing. To audition four times, to go through that type of auditioning four times, and to stick with it to go back again and then get as far as you did. I mean, that's just, that's magical, man. That's That's what people need to learn to do. Yeah, praise God. God be the glory because uh, I, I don't know how, how in the world it happened, but it definitely did. But I think, you know, I think it happened. I think I'm on the show. But, um, yeah, it's a word to never give up on your dreams, you know? I, 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 I'm, I'm a living testament to that at the moment. As much as people tell you, you know, don't give up, I really can tell you don't give up in anything possible. We believe in yourself. We believe in Trust in God. So. Nice. Yeah. So what it was one of your from from your songs and everything else? What was one of your favorite songs that you sung on there and why? I know you won't, but Carrie Underwood had to be. You know, it's the highlight. You know, whenever they go back in American House over in like twenty years, right. they're gonna go back. I think they're gonna do like you know, what were the greatest moments of American Idol? And I think that that performance is gonna be one on there. And they like be like the number one hundred and not like number two or something, but. I definitely think like that was like, I think one of the biggest moments, not only I had in my life, but you know, the 
show itself. And um, that made the Jennifer Savior with that song had to be one of the greatest friends of my life, and I'll forever be grateful to God for her and for everything she did for me. What did she fought. Well, I'll tell you what, that was actually going to be what I was going to say as well, was that song you sung exactly that time was I Know You Won't by Carrie Underwood. Because, man, that was, that was a magical moment. And sometimes people have these moments, and that was a moment, man. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was a moment. It was definitely was. I still remember going up to her and hugging her when Ryan said, you want to hug her? And I was, um, I ran down to hug her, and she just whispered in my ear, and when a Spanish woman calls you papi, papito, it's always a good thing. So, <laughs> when I went up to her, she was telling me, don't cry, papi, it's okay. You so worth You so deserve it, papi. You so deserve it. And she gave me, like, two kisses on the cheek, and then she gave me, like, three hugs. And, yeah, even though I, I tell myself, you know, God gave me not only my dream to be an American, I'm the top 12, but Jennifer Lopez was my biggest fan. Like, I'm good. Like, that's it. That's it right there. Like, thank you, Lord. I'm good right there. <laughs> so, would you consider her being your favorite judge? Oh, I mean, I love Brandon Steven, but I mean, like, it wasn't obvious to answer that question. I mean, she's not bad for the eyes and all that other stuff, but I think one thing that I like about her, and one of the reasons why she's also one of my favorite judges, is um, her compassion for the singers. Yeah, I mean, so she real. is. It is. She's so deep and real about it. Exactly. Yeah, I've been a fan of J Lo since she did the uh, that once that one of her first movies when she was a, a teenager. I forgot the name of the movie, but um, it was one of my, my favorite ones. And ever since she was, you know, starring on all the work that she did. But a lot of times people forget that when you get as big as J Lo gets, that they still have a heart and they still have feelings. And Jennifer just kind of brings yeah. that out. So whenever you get big and famous, well, you're already big and famous now. But um, do you consider no, yourself? Still being in contact and in touch with that, and just keeping it real. Oh, of course. Like, and the one thing I, you're right. I'm gonna go back there for a second. What you just said, like, you would think Jeff Lopez was with, with when, you, when you say like a list of superstars, she was at the top up there, you know, with some of the biggest names. And you would think that you know she would be, you know, not as loving as she is, but she is so real and authentic. Like her heart is so true. Like, I, I, I it was unbelievable. Unbelievable to me, and the and the moment that I get that big, I don't know, I don't know if that's ever gonna happen. Not so many people get just global big, but I never want my heart to change, and I don't think my brother let me. He's like my assistant, slash everything else, and uh, <laughs> funny slap me because I ever, ever tried to act like anything above myself. <laughs> so yeah, I, I never want my heart to change ever. That's awesome. Got to do a reality check, huh? Pop you upside the head. You will. <laughs> And that's that I'm not even, I don't even change. Like, I'm still the same kid. Like, I'm not famous at all. I'm just this regular kid who got to live his dream one more time. You know what? He definitely will slap me a couple of times to make sure that I, I'm aware of that. <laughs> that's family love right there, man. You can't beat that. <laughs> you can't buy that kind of love, man. That just comes wrong for the ride. <laughs> that love comes without a refund. A refund. You know, I don't have a receipt to say that, guy. <laughs> oh my goodness so with the uh, the performance the amazing performance that you did I Know You Won't by um, Carrie Underwood that song by Carrie Underwood and that moment would you consider that you had and not necessarily one that um, is that we would think but what would you consider I always like to go with the good and the bad but what would you consider would be like one of your worst performances and why do you think that oh. it was a worst performance like hardest critics oh. and stuff like that and how has it changed oh. you the night, the, the performance that got me eliminated when I went home, top 13 performance with Driven Sky or Stevie Wonder Week. Yeah. First of all, with Stevie Wonder and, and Whitney Houston, like, you, you can't pick a harder artist to cover. Like, those are the greatest, like, in the history of music, you know? And, oh my gosh. I look back and I realize that I should have picked another song. 
to be honest with you, in rehearsal, I, there was another key change in the song, and um, we were in one of the rehearsals, I don't know, not dress rehearsal. It was so bad that our executive producer had to come up on stage and we had to work it out with the band to the point where we had to remove a section in the song. So if you go on AmericanIdol.com and watch the video of the performance, there was like a long gap in between me singing a line and then I take the microphone off the stand and I walk up the stage and there's like a whole, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds of song that I was supposed to sing that I just couldn't do. So, in a long story short, it was so bad in rehearsal that I was so scared that it was going to be so terrible live. Like, I was going to butcher the song completely. Thank God it didn't get butchered, but I definitely think that it wasn't my best at all. Well, that's understandable. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. So how do you feel in terms of your performance and stuff coming up? How has it changed you, and what have you have learned from it? Oh, my gosh, to not be nervous in front of people. Well, I still get crazy. I still get nervous. But nervous is good. Like, the people, people don't understand that when you're in front of, like, seven cameras that you know that 25 million people are watching you through those cameras. Oh, my God. Like, it, it's a scary thing. Like, that first night that I sang Gravity by Sarah Bareilles, yeah. Like, people know how scary that is. You know, we, we work really hard to get where we're at. I think some people think sometimes that we're just, you know, oh, we don't get to live the life and stuff. No, we work really hard, and it is the scariest thing that you can, one of the scariest things, you know, it's a scary thing, but to try to sing in front of 25 million people is not easy, so, you know, it was hard, but it was a dream, so. Nice. Now, um, and I have, I, I, I definitely agree with you on that. Once you get, because it's not like you have literally 25 million pounds of, or people's pounds on top of your shoulders, but it feels like that in terms of nervousness. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of like when you get that nervous energy, um, have you found a way to like harness it and be able to redirect it out into your performance now? Yeah. I do. Now that, now that I do shows for a living and, and I've been on the biggest show in the world, I've come so far where I'm able to take those nerves and just um, put them, they become adrenaline, and they, they make you give a better show, a better performance, exactly. and I've learned that that's, that's what, uh, I think the crowd sometimes is as nervous to meet me as I am to meet them. Yeah. So when we you know, put our nerves together, it's like an explosion, so good stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's what I've, I've talked to a couple of people before, and that's whenever they, they've said the greatest energy that they could ever get is right before the curtain goes up, right before you hear lights, camera, action, and you you just get all this adrenaline, and you just got to use it. Yeah, yeah. That's why my first song when I do shows, it's got to be an up tempo, upbeat song, because <laughs> I've got so much adrenaline in me that if I if it's not, I'm gonna and I started with a slow song, I'm gonna go crazy. That's why it has to be fast. No, they need to be the type of I am there for a second, and then we can bring things down. Nice. I like that. So you just kind of like bam and hit them, you know, first song um, with all the energy and stuff like that. That's awesome. I like that approach. Now, um, do you, you said you were just on TBN. Um, do you miss performing in front of all those people in, in terms of like, you know, 25 million, seven cameras, stuff like that? I, I do. I do. I, now looking back at it, I wish I could be on every day, you know? <laughs> when I first got there, I was scared out of my mind. But, um, yeah, I, I missed it. And I went on TBN the other night. And TBN is a huge network. That it goes around the world. There's actually about yeah. 1.7 million billion people that watch it it's, on, it's, uh, online and in, on TV and um, all around the world. And um, I was scared out of my mind again, but I, I just it just gave me that sense of being back home. I loved it. Like, I loved it. And uh, even just, just watching, like, those concerts that I went to this past weekend in the New York State Fair, watching these artists perform, like, it shows me everything that I want to do for the rest of them. And I've only gotten the first little taste of it. And I can't wait for the rest of my life to begin. That makes sense? I know, I know I've been living for 20 years, but, like, it's like a new, a new start, a new beginning that I've been so blessed with in, like, a whole different life. Nice. So I, I can't wait for it. Yeah, TBN. Yeah, TBN's pretty huge. But whenever you get out there in front of you know twenty five million or one point seven billion people all around the world, and um, is there any one particular person that you're really singing to? God. Nice. Uh, because I honestly believe that without the fame of God, I would never gotten to where I'm at right now. And without God on my side, I wouldn't be able to do this. 
Like, I think that was sort of amazing. and stuff. So. Like, he is the other part of the adrenaline. You know what I mean? He gives me right. the strength, I mean, to, to get through the performance and to get through the fight. Because it's not an easy life, the traveling and everything, the performing. You get tired, but, you know, I'm glad I'm excited, you know. I mean, him I'm constantly reminding me that this is a dream that I actually saw in my life. Since he makes it worthwhile and makes it better. Right, nice. I was going to say, because I, I talked to a couple of people, and they were saying, whenever you sung, and they were watching their show, they're like, he sang that to me, I could feel it, I could feel it through the TV, it was directly yeah. to me. <laughs> well, well, to God first, and then I was just staring at J-Lo the whole time, <laughs> so I was singing to her, but because the camera was right there, this is what it looked like. Especially in that wild card performance, I said, all right, there me. I was playing that whole time when I got eliminated. First of all, when they put me up there with Phil Phillips to do the elimination, which one of us is safe, which one of us is going through. I'm not stupid. I knew I was going home. Oh, <laughs> man. I said, you know. And so the moment that I got eliminated, I went back to my seat. I was praying. The Lord, please give me the favor to get the opportunity. They do give me the favor to make it through this. And I um, tell myself, you're going to sing. You're going to sing like you've never sang in your life before. Because if you don't, and you let your nerves take over, you're going to go home soon. You're going to do this. So at the beginning of that performance, it kind of sounds like I'm about to cry. And yeah. I just decided to just stare at her, because I knew that if I stared at her, she was going to feel that wanting to cry, exactly what I was feeling. That's what I did. And then she did start Sweet. to cry, so it was perfect. That's awesome. I like that. I like that. Um, who was your favorite competitor on the show? I mean, it is a competition, but you guys become friends so fast, and you go through so much together. I love People don't realize that this show, like, I, it took almost an entire year to finish the show. Like, we've been doing this since last July. Yeah. Like, it's August. Like, that's crazy stuff, you know? So, we become family with these people. I've lived with Colton in a hotel room for months and months. So, you know, you, you love these people. And they become your brothers and your sisters and your family. And I, I just saw them in New York City perform at the concert. Um, and even though I didn't make it to top 10, you know, go on tour with them, I love going to see them because it's like, that's my family. You know what I mean? And, and um, uh, who's my favorite? That's a really hard question. Yeah. But who's closest to me? Probably Jessica and Colton and Joshua and uh, DeAndre and Erica and Holly and Philip <laughs> and Keith and... <laughs> And Skyler and Shannon. Oh, Shannon and I are really close. Shannon and I live right next to each other. Like, she lives, like, literally, I can get to her house in, like, 50 minutes. Oh, that's tight. And then nice. she lives, like, I've been to her house before. So, like, her and I are we're very close. Cool, she's been uh, just as busy as I have. Like, you would think that because we're the two that got cut before 10, we would be in a home. But, man, have we been blessed. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many shows I've done already and how many things she's done already. How much we've done recording and writing, so... And that's good stuff, but yeah, that's my order on them. <laughs> nice, because it is, like, a, like I said, it, it is a, a major brotherhood and sisterhood that you guys go through. And you're right, you've been doing it for, you know, about a year. And a lot of times people don't understand on how close you guys have to be. And sometimes people can't handle being that close to so many people and doing so much stuff that you guys do. I mean, it's like crazy American Idol boot camp kind of stuff that you guys go through. It's, it's wild. It's like, you live, you, you have no choice but to live with these people. Like, you don't have your family there, so who are you going to be with? You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Your family flies out for a show, but what about the rest of the month that you're there waiting to perform for that show, you know? Right. They become your everything. They become everybody, the people that you wake up and see in the morning, the people that you go to eat with, the people that you go to wash clothes with, the people that you do everything with, they become. So, yeah, that's a big, huge family. Nice. Because one thing I like about um, that one versus other reality shows or competition shows is the fact that you do live together, um, you you get this major bonding and stuff, but you're not really trying to X anybody out or distinguish anybody's torch or anything like that. You guys literally wish each other the very best and support each other as you're going through that. You, you, you call them every day, you text them, I still talk to all all the time. And you, it, it hurts you so much. And, um, you know, you love them, so you only wish the best for them. And it's, it's so weird because you want to win, but you don't want them to lose. Right. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, well, 
whoever wins, whoever wins, and I know that they say that a lot, but it's like really, really true when you're living in it. Right. Yeah, I can completely understand. Is is where you don't want to go home or anything like that. And you made it. Um, I think you were, you know, number thirteen or something. You advanced to the top thirteen, and so that's huge, yeah. huge, huge. And at the same time, it's like, you know, unfortunately, it is a competition, and somebody does have to go home. And you know, and the cards fall where they may on that particular night. But again, it's not like you guys want to, you know, you know, trash each other's song or or backstab them or you know anything like that. And that's what I really like okay. about American Idol. Watch, we watched during rehearsal, and so proud of people. Like I remember when Scott Elaine, our country twang girl, who I love so much. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> her, her Whitney Houston song. Oh my God! Yeah. She sang that Whitney Houston song like something I've never heard before. And it was incredible. And in rehearsals, you know, you have no, you, you have, there's like no malice in your heart. All you want to do is cheer for them and love on them and let them know that they're doing amazing. Yeah. And well, you know how hard it is singing and hoping that it's good enough. Right. So you want to make sure that you let them know that too, you know? Yeah. That, um, the song Wind Beneath My Wings that she sung is actually, was actually recorded oh. by Gary Morris. And, um, I, that night, I texted Gary Morris, and I said, Gary, you've got to watch this recording of Skylar singing this song. And he went to check out the video of it. And, uh, I mean, she just rocked it. And he was like, thanks, Brian, you know, thanks for showing this to me. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. She so deserved that. To make it as far as she did. It's not further. She was incredible. Yeah. Whenever you guys have moments like that, can you feel the moment that you're in? Can you be like, oh, yeah, I just nailed this one. I just rocked this one. Can you I mean, can you feel that yeah. section? You can. When, 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 when you're singing the song, maybe not so much, but at the end of the song, when the judges are on their feet and the crowd is, like, going crazy, or you're crying because you're a big, huge baby who, you know, just got into the box and say by Jennifer Lopez, and you feel it, and you know that it was the moment. And then you go home to the hotel and you watch it on TV, and then you read online and and you have all these interviews where the press is telling you that you were the star that night and you were the one that, you know, were made the show that night, you definitely feel those moments. And it's an amazing feeling. So was it difficult going back and watching yourself on TV? It was so difficult. I hate it. I still to this day hate some of the performances because I'm like, oh my gosh, was I that nervous that I sounded that bad? And if I was that bad, how did Jennifer Lopez and Randy and Steven Tyler put me through? <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I want to point out to anyone that is watched, has watched um, on my Grotto and wanted to know what was on my tongue that made it a different color. It was cough drops. I would wake up at like 6 in the morning, get ready, and I wouldn't sing to like almost 9 o'clock at night having cough drops, making sure that I was, you know, ready to go. Right. That's the reason why I'm tongue was a different color. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. You have an inside tip from American Idolist <laughs> Jamie Rosado about how to stay ready. Get ready and stay ready with cough drops. <laughs> That's awesome. But use clear ones or honey ones because they won't change the color of the tongue. I've learned that now. <laughs> That's cool. Um, nickname wise, um, are you still carrying around the nickname Jair Bear from J Lo? I am. Nice. I am carrying. The nickname Jerry Bear, and not not by choice. I, you know, sometimes it's like, well, my name is Jeremy. Well, yeah, that's, that's the kid. There's the Jerry Bear. And it's like, no, that's not what my mom named me. But because Jennifer also gave me that name, it's totally fired with it. Totally, totally fired with it. So it, it definitely comes from a family. You know, it's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Dude, man, it, it fits you so well. And it, it, it really is a good nickname, it, I, I promise you. Not just because J-Lo gave it to you or anything, but it's a cool name. And it fits your whole persona. You're, you're a good, wholesome American guy, um, the way you sing and everything else. And so that's why I said, you know, you're like this. I actually had this girl tell me, she said, you're going to talk to um, the Jer Bear, the big teddy bear guy that I wish I could just get a, a big hug from. And I said, well, yes, he's going to be on this show. But, Go ahead. I said I get that a lot from people. <laughs> that's cool. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Yeah, how can you turn that down? You just can't turn that down. I can't. 
Now, if you could pick a person that you could sing a duet with, um, who would it be? And what song would you choose to sing? Jessica Sanchez and anything that she wants to sing. I think that girl is probably the most, one of the most talented people that's ever been on Idol. Not only on Idol, but one of the most talented, one of, one of the best voices I've ever heard in my life. Like, I think she'll be a legend. I think she's going to be the next Mariah Carey, I mean, Dion, Whitney Houston, Gina Aguilera type. You know, she's only 16 years old, and that voice comes out of that little body. Imagine when she hits 25. She's been doing this for her life. She's going to be out of this world. She already is. Yeah, her. Yeah, I, I agree. Consider if you look at the, if you'd close your eyes and just listen to her, um, you wouldn't think that that's her. You would think it was, you know, no. somebody at least a little bit bigger and a little bit older, um, with that maturity level yeah. that she has in her voice. And then whenever you look at her, like, really, seriously, you know, is there some kind of camera tricks going on here? Oh, she's what? Is she singing like this? <laughs> Oh my goodness! So, do you think you'll um, get that chance to sing with her again? Well, I just saw her yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, and I asked her again. I'm already asked her this question, but since she signed with Interscope and that's Jimmy I don't really think he likes me too much. I don't know if that's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know if it will allow it. Well, you never can tell. Um, like I said, the, the sisterhood and brotherhood. That... Like, do it. And just put it on my album and just really release. Yeah, exactly. The sisterhood and brotherhood that you guys um, built on that show is absolutely amazing. So I wouldn't say never. You know, it may not necessarily be within the next year or two or, you know, right around the corner a week from now. But um, with your tenacity, dude, and how much you stick with it, I'm pretty sure you'll have that uh, duet with her at some point. Oh, perfect plan. Are you listening, Jessica? Listen. <laughs> The um, now what's next? What's next for you? Where do you see yourself in five years? Grammys, Oscars, um, Billboard Awards, American Music Awards, um, <laughs> all the good stuff. You know, just just a dreaming little little dream. Now, um, honestly, I want to release an album within the next six to eight months or so. Um, we're still listening. We're still, you know. Looking for the right label, finishing up everything, getting out of contracts with idols. So as soon as we get signed, and then we'll work on the album. But I don't want it to be rushed either, because I want it to be music that's going to be hits. You know, I want it to be music that is going to uh, inspire people and make good music. Because if you put out an album and it's not in garbage, just because you've got sent to a record deal and you put an album on, you know, it doesn't mean your career's going to last forever. And I want to do this for the rest of my life. So I want to make sure that it's uh, amazing music. Um, I want to go into acting because I love it so much and, um, you know, keep living the big dream. I want to keep leading worship in my church as much as I can and fly home every Sunday if I can. <laughs> but, um, you know, just, just, just the big spectrum. Nice. Okay, nice. Well, I like the fact that you dream big. So when you're talking about Grammys and all the other stuff like that, you know, getting an Oscar, you know, for acting, whatever else, I like that. And I think that's the type of goals that people should set. You know, um, definitely I believe in people should set attainable goals and reachable goals and stuff like that. And I think that's attainable and reachable for you, without a doubt, in my mind. I think that's definitely reachable. I dreamed all my life about, thank you, sir, for that, by the way. But I dreamed all my life to be on the biggest show in the world, American Idol. And I told my mom, at well, almost every day I'm going to be on the show for 10 years. And, you know, I don't think she really ever believed it was going to happen. But now that it's happened, I kind of tell her, Mom, I'm going I'm to win an Oscar. She looks and she says, okay, well, if you've got an American, I'm sure you're going to win an Oscar, too. So if you're going to do that, you can do this, too. So uh, I see that this type of stuff is attainable now that I've had this in the this platform. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep chasing the sun. Nice. I like that. A lot of times people, they don't want to step out of their comfort zone. And it's when you step out of your comfort zone is when you become unique and spectacular. And that's where you are now. Thank you. Thank you. Now, an album that you have coming up, you said that you were just now getting out of American Idol contracts because you have to go this, this yeah. year range for doing after the show. Um, album that you're coming up and new releases and stuff, what are they? It's <laughs> a great question. At the moment, you know, we're still finding our way. I mean, like I said, I'm trusting God. You know, it may just be a straight Christian album. It may be a crossover album 
with, you know, something like As Life House does, something like um, um, a lot of these artists like Daughtry do, where they, the music gets played up on Christian radio and, and uh, mainstream radio. So, you know, we'll see, and I, I'm excited. though. definitely going to be out there very soon. So, everybody listening, please follow me on Twitter and Facebook, J Rosado AI11, J R O S A D O A I11. And uh, we're going to be updating all my tour dates and, and all my shows and events, appearances, and, and I'm going to be updating the album as well up there, so you guys know where we're at. Nice, very good. You're also doing some other work with um, charitable organizations. You just finished some stuff with um, two of them, United Way, and what was the other one? Yeah, I actually just did an event for the United Way in Tampa at the same few times, or the Tampa Bay Times Forum. It was amazing. It was uh, so amazing to see how many people come out. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, I've actually done three. Three, I've done okay. One for, uh, I've done one for the Tampa, uh, for the United Way. And I did one for March of Dimes for the babies. Sweet. That one was, oh my gosh, heartbreaking and, and very close to my heart because um, my sister actually had a child. Um, um, his name was CJ, and um, he, he passed away when he was two months old. So something mm. like uh, March of Dimes definitely is close to my heart. I, I definitely want to stay in contact with them as much as I possibly can. So, um, uh, yeah. And then I've got a, the next char char charity event I've got is... Um, it's um, Mothers Against Junk Driving, and they're like an organization because I think it's a woman that started it. I believe her child was killed by a drunk driver, and now they, they do rallies and they, they um, make, make, make awareness and uh, trying to stop this whole ordeal of drunk driving. So crazy dangerous. Yeah, I think there's going to be, um, hopefully there'll be Mothers Against Text Driving too pretty soon. So. Text Driving, that's enough. <laughs> The, um, um, if I ever, my mom slaps me. She, like I told you, my brother says my mother doesn't feel me. <laughs> I even think about looking at my phone when I'm driving. She's laughing. <laughs> now, now, no matter how big you get there, Jerry Bear, you'll be, always be your mother's baby. So <laughs> she has the right forever in your life to put you back into your place. <laughs> <laughs> definitely does. Definitely does. She went through the pain, and you know I. Here, so thank God for it. Well, I guess she can hit me for us. Like, <laughs> I'm like, why do you still hit me? And she's like, well, I give birth to you so I can hit you. <laughs> right, I brought you into this world. I'll take you out. <laughs> I'll take you out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She'll probably hit you upside the head with one of your own Grammys. <laughs> she probably will hit me upside the head with a Grammy, with a double one, with an American Music Award, and a Billboard. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's a true mother's love right there. <laughs> and, you know, and you know what? I think that's that's good for a person. You know, when a mother loves you that much, that's all good and fine. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've definitely got the best mommy in the world. I love your mommy if you live Oh my goodness. Now, uh, do you get a chance to see her much? Talk to her much? Um, I do. I mean, as much as I can. She's still working um, until I get to the point where I can just completely and fully support her. But I'm working hard now so we can get to that point very soon. But, um, you know, I I live with her still. Thank God. Because I'm still a baby. But, um, <laughs> nice. Uh, it's not as easy seeing her as much as I'd like to because of all the, sh all the shows that I do. And, and lately, in the past couple of weeks, I've been traveling so much that it's kind of like she just takes me to the airport and say, bye, I love you, and then I'm out. I'm not, I see her again for a little while, and then I'm out again. So it's getting harder, but, um, you know, it's working out. Anyway. Does she ever give you any influences in terms of songs to sing or um, while you're on American Idol well, in terms just, of helping you out? She just... She doesn't give me songs to sing. She tells me which songs I shouldn't sing, and she doesn't do it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I hope she's listening to this interview, too, because when I told her that I wanted to sing I Know You Won't by Carrie Underwood, which was my biggest moment on American Idol, and I was singing it for her in the house, she was yelling at me, telling me, you need to stop singing that song because you sound like you're screaming, and it's going to hurt you when you go to American Idol. And now I look back at her, and I'm like, uh-huh, that was biggest moment in the show and it hurt <laughs> so you know 
she's a lot of times she's right though, um, and she doesn't say it the nicest way because and I and but I know that when I do make her cry, or she tells me that's amazing, it's because it's like really, really, really good. Because what's good to someone will be just okay to her. So she's definitely my best and hardest critic. You um, think even more to my so. Yeah, I think family. Um is a, a person's major support system without a doubt and it sounds like between your mother oh, and your brother you have a great support system oh yeah my dad too my i've got i've actually got three sisters and two brothers so i've got a huge family we've got 13 nieces and nephews some is humongous and um they're all nice. loud but um yeah i've definitely got a huge support system and people that keep me level-headed because my sister will slap me as well. She's hard. Part of the family, but she, she, I don't care if you're bigger than me. I will slap. You. And you know, she, she will. She scares me a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> well, see, the fact that family keeps you in check like that when you're going out and you're striving to be the very best that you possibly can, and to sing your heart out and touch millions of people around the world. Um, I think that's good for you, though. I mean, it, it definitely is. Because otherwise, if people just if people praised you all the time, they said, "Oh, you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great." Huge, you know? Yeah. Singing hard, being, trying to be a gangster rapper or something when that's just <laughs> not me, you know. And and singing like hard, songs that I just can't sing, you know. And I'd be thinking, "Well, I'm amazing," so but, you know, I'm not. I'm just Jeremy, a kid that'll get slapped by his family. <laughs> and, um, we don't need to, we don't need to call like child abuse services. Yeah, definitely, definitely not. Sometimes <laughs> people like to use the hand a lot. <laughs> <laughs> my mother used to uh she used to make me go out and pick a, a branch off the tree and I, I, I it's not a twig if i brought something back too small she'd be like no that's not big enough you need to go find something else and so i had to go pick out my own uh, uh whipping stick and i was like man mom this is just not right and uh but you know what she made me a great person for it and i think that's what family's all about oh yeah now um oh, yeah. in terms of relationships how are you doing there? Too busy for it? Or... I said, too busy for it? Or is there somebody close in your heart there, Jerry Bear? Too busy for it at the moment. At the there moment? Is, okay. You know, I know someone that I do love, but she, yeah, it's hard at the moment. And, um, you know, she's actually someone who's also kind of does something like what I do. So, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, yeah. yeah we'll go to the next <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, no worries there whatsoever. Um, all right. So out of out of all the seasons that you did, you performed. I mean, you auditioned for four times. You went to um, got it on season eleven. You went all the way up to the thirteenth person. Um, is there anything you would have changed? about your process through this whole thing? Oh my gosh, I would have dressed better. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. Before we hit the stylist in the show, Soyana's the most amazing stylist at my lady does so you can see them as well. Um, yeah, I, just, I didn't know how to dress. And I look back at myself and I'm like, okay. I wore a vest with everything. A vest in different colors. You know? And I love that I can make fun of myself too. But I definitely needed some help back then. But um, other like singing wise, I definitely would have changed the ribbon in the sky to another song, and um, I would have not so I would have tried not to be not so nervous when I sang Gravity. But you know I, I don't really have any regrets other than that from the show because I still got to live my dream. You know, American I not so many people can sing. All right. Well, dressing, you mentioned dressing better, but a lot of people on American Idol, they dress to be comfortable, and they are who they are, and that's one of the great things about it as well, is because um, they do have fashion people who set you up wardrobe and all that stuff like that, but you seem comfortable, and it seems like every time I go to watch somebody perform, they're dressing to be comfortable, to be them, and I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with it. So, I mean, you like vests, you wore vests, you were comfortable on stage doing what you needed to do, and there's this little trick that... Albert Einstein actually wore the same clothes every day, I think. And his thoughts were because he didn't have to worry about wearing anything. He just got to put some clothes on, then he did his, he did his job. 
So the fact that all, every time I see somebody on American Idol, they're comfortable. The last thing they really worry about, or I, I would think that the last thing they would want to worry about is what they're wearing. You know, go out there and yeah. sing. It's a singing competition. That's, more about, that's one of the things they tell us. It's our fashion show. So it's more, you worry about your performance because that's what it's about. At the same time, you know, we get, you know, we get an allowance on the show and we're able to go get nice clothes, clothes that we probably couldn't have gotten before the show. So it's, it's always cool, you know, to spend other people's money and get nice clothes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we definitely want to look very funny, especially Philip. You could not change that brother, and I love him for it because if much as they wanted to change him, he was not changing his t-shirt and fair jeans. That was him. That was him, and I love that he, he stuck to it. He stood for it. Look at him now; he's like a superstar already. Like I think his, his singles are about to go platinum. I think he's like around eight hundred thousand copies sold. Like that doesn't happen to you on your first single, like a brand new artist, you know? Right. In like two months. So. Well, yeah, I mean, he's he's an amazing singer as well, but um, yeah, with whatever whoever they are, whatever they wear, I think personally, um, again, I I just respect that out of the person, and um, I, I think it's cool because you don't have to go out there and wear a tuxedo all the time. You don't have to go out there and wear a suit all the time. It's a singing competition, and you guys just keep it to you, the music, and that's what's so great about it. But I did not know that yeah. American Idol actually gives you guys. Um, a little salary, a little bit of benefit. I thought they just kind of furnish the stuff for the show and they give you a wardrobe selection, but I didn't realize that. So that's pretty cool. That's really nice of them. Besides this big mansion and all the other stuff they give you, they actually give you some money for you to be able to go out oh, yeah. and get some of your own things. Definitely. Well, we have to go shopping with the stylist. That, that's the catch, though, which is cool because she helps us dress nice. You know, I got a couple of these G-Shocks. They're, you know, they're a good amount of money to put a pair of G-Shocks by Casio. So they're like my favorite watch in the world. Yeah. So American Idol definitely blessed me with a couple, and um, you know, but we get to we just go to a normal mall. The funny thing is though that we have to go to the bodyguard. So it's so weird. Like we have this big, huge, tall guy walking around with us, even taller than me, walking around with us. You know, and we go in like different groups of people to go shopping and stuff, and um, it's cool, and it's their money, so we don't have to find any card or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, that's pretty tight. Now, is it because you go around to this particular, um, with these tour guides or whatever, is it because of the fans, they mass mob you or something like that? Is it for your own protection? Yeah, they, yeah. especially if we were together. We went to Disney, all of us, together the other day, and it was, it was rough. We, had, we couldn't stop, though. We, did, we just had to keep going because we would have been there forever. forever. But, um, yeah, it's definitely why. And, you know, there's always some people who are, you know, they're not, some people are always not happy for you, you know, because they wish it was them, they got to live their dream, and, and of course, God yeah. bless them, and you always wish the best for them, and some people are out sometimes to hurt you, and, um, you know, we're always protected, which I think I can protect myself, so, you know, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, whenever the paparazzi gets crazy like that, and you do have, you know, girls want to rip your shirt off and get a piece of your hair and all that other stuff. You know, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it does get a little crazy out there. Yeah. Does that bother you, the paparazzi? I mean, it's cool. I, you, you love it at first. You love, and you love meeting everybody, and you love seeing pictures and stuff. But then after a while, kind of, you know, it's still, it's always amazing. But it is tiring sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, it's part of the job. So you fall in love with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I think it's a two-way street. Um, being in the entertainment business, you know, um, the paparazzi is there to help you, and you're there to help the paparazzi. And, um, you know, but they, I think at some points they have to realize, okay, the guy has no personal life. We need to take a break and, you know, let him be him or something yeah. like that. But um, I think it's a good two-way street, so that's cool. And the fact that fans and everything else, you know, nobody's, like I said, nobody's a uh, you know, mass mobbed you so much to where you're actually in a hospital or anything else. Be like, oh, wow, they scratched him all up trying to rip his clothes off or whatever. Jerry Bear, I want you to have my baby or whatever, you know. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> you, girls, man, girls oh, get crazy. I have, been, I have been supposed to for the time, and I'm not opposed to these things, <laughs> but I just, I don't have time at the moment. <laughs> and, then, and there's too many of them. <laughs> but uh, it's good stuff, it's always good stuff. Yeah. 
cool. So future shows and everything that you have coming on. You were just on TBN. Um, you've got your music CD that once you get finished with the American Idol contract, you're going to be putting some songs out, um, things like yeah. that. So what are what are yeah. some other places and appearances to where you're going to be where people can come and listen to you, um, things like that? Actually, this Saturday in Long Island, there's an event called the New York Call, and you can go to the New York Call, nycall.com, I think it is, or you can go to Twitter and Facebook and find my information. You can find out about it. Um, singing at a church on Sunday in New Jersey, and then some of my big shows, I'm singing at an NFL game, um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa on September 30th, and then I'm doing the, um, actually right when I get home, I've got the MLB, the Tampa Bay Rays, and the New York Yankees game on Labor Day weekend on the 3rd of September. So you guys can come up to that, and I've got some big shows in Tampa and, and other places. So just, just check me out on Facebook and Twitter, and you'll be able to be updated on everything. Okay, cool. The, now... The Facebook again is J Rosado A I eleven. That's J R O S A D O A I one one, and that's also the Twitter yeah. as well, correct? Yeah, at J R O S A I. I'm sorry, J R O S A D O A I eleven. I say that thing so much that I forget how to spell my last name. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can believe that actually. <laughs> my goodness, I just spell my last name wrong. <laughs> cool. So everybody needs to check that out and um, stay tuned for updates and stuff like that. Well, websites come on and mm -hmm. and all the activity mm -hmm. level and stuff like that that you're doing. How um, many check the amount of followers Colton has? Come on, guys. I love you. <laughs> well, I don't think that's too far away. So all you got to do is stare into the camera and give them that Jerry Bear look. And I think you have girls just, you know, <laughs> dreaming of you and everything else. So I think it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, Sounds like a plan. <laughs> right up there when you win in the Oscars and the Grammys and everything else. And then your mom's backhanding you saying, keep yourself in check. I think My that's great. My mom's backhanding in, in, in the limo on the wings of the Oscars. What you say? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so, um, do you have any final thoughts you would like for everybody to know about you? Or just life in general? Oh, yes. Um, you should know about me. Fun facts. Let's do like try to do five fun facts. First thing, I know Jesus Christ knows everything in the world. I'm not sure if anyone wants to know that about me. And I hope that it only inspire people to, you know, um, um, be, uh, you know, more of a follow up. I don't know what, however you say that, but yes, yeah, the first thing. Second thing is that um, I was Jalo's favorite. <laughs> Third thing is that my last name in Spanish in ton of pink in Spanish is translated to Rosado. Fourth thing is that I love juice like an addiction. It's really, really bad. <laughs> and the fifth thing is that I love my friends more than they can ever imagine. Damn. Very cool. Very oh, and I'm a rapper, too. I'm going to be rapping. I'm going to my song is pretty cool. <laughs> Alright. Maybe you can give us a good Christian well, rap you, album. What did you say? I said maybe you can give us a good Christian rap album. Oh, no joke. I think I am going to be, um, you know, picking up my rapper skills very soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> well, on behalf of everyone, Jeremy, um, on the, from the producers to the editors to everybody who puts the show out and f to all the fans and listeners around the world, um, thank you so much for being on our show, taking the time out on your busy schedule um, to talk to us about your life and your future work and everything else that's coming up. And, you know, congratulations on such a great success on American Idol. It's it's a huge, huge honor to be able to talk to you Um for all the work that you've done and the tenacity that you have as a person and the family support that you have going on behind you, I see nothing but great things in your future. And, you know, I'd love to have you back on whenever your your first album gets released. Um, you get your website up and everything else goes on. Um, it'd be a, it'd be great to have you back on. We're going to fly in this time and we're going to we're gonna do like an acoustic set list and we'll have like a meet and greet with the fans of the nation or something. Nice. Let's do it. Nice. I nice. know, but I, I thank you guys so much for having me. Um, it's been a huge honor. Same here. 
God bless you guys, and, and I just pray that you guys will keep supporting me and following me on my journey, and you can stop me a couple times if I, if I ever try to change at all. Hey, it's just, it's just tough love, baby. That's all it is. It's just tough love. <laughs> all right. Well, it sounds like it's like God bless you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Please welcome our musical guest, Jeremy Rosado, with his song, Ribbon in the Sky. Now, a word from our sponsors. At Taylor Gifts, we do customized monogramming and embroidery. We can monogram anything from a simple one name on a bib for a baby to a customized logo on a company shirt. We can make gifts for your wedding entourage and gifts for your friends. Label your children's items for school and put names on jerseys for sports. If you have items of your own you want to monogrammed and embroidered, we can do that. Taylor Gifts are sewn with high-quality thread on a professional embroidery machine. So go to the website, www.taylorgifts.net, call 251-391-4354, email sales at taylorgifts.net, visit us at ETSY, and Facebook us. We are ready for your orders. Welcome to WROM, Realms of Music Radio and Social Network. 
We support independent artists and talk shows, hosting a large discussion forum and an artist gallery. We also have a large social network combining the best of Facebook and MySpace into one. So make sure you submit your music to us and create a profile to promote yourself today. That's realmsofmusic.com, the best of music radio. The Ghost Tales Television Network, GTN. GTN is designed to give the paranormal TV and filmmaking community the opportunity to showcase their talents and creations. If you believe you have what it takes to create your very own TV show and or short film and you would like the opportunity to showcase your creations, you may contact us at ghosttalestv at gmail.com or call 901-377-7166 for more details. Make sure you visit ghosttalestv.com. GTN, America's paranormal superstation. Jackalope 105 FM on jackaloperadio.com. Your alternative to the grind of internet and FM radio. When we say diversity in programming, we mean it. Lots of stations brag, throw out a hype, and pad their numbers. Well, we don't. Accept no limitations. When you truly want awesome 24-hour radio, tune in to Jackalope and rock your routine. Jackalope 105 FM on jackaloperadio.com. Thank you for listening to the show. I am your host, Brian Lee Watley. I hope you have an amazing weekend, and I look forward to seeing you next time when another story begins. Until then, love and light.